Express Tire Center, Aces Bail Bonds, Miranda and Sons Automotive, Bridgeport Auto Glass, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, Oz Funeral Home. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Welcome to Super Elite Entertainment, or welcome to Live with Jason Rodriguez. I'm your host, and we are here in the studio in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So excited to be here broadcasting live from our studio. And listen, tonight we have a really, really amazing show set for you guys. We have State Representative Antonio Felipe here in the studio tonight sitting on the hot seat. But really quick, before we bring uh, State Rep Felipe into the picture, I just want to remind you guys, that we are live on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. If you're listening to us on our podcast, thank you for tuning in tonight. Also, I want to remind you that Perez Tire Center, located at 72 Milton Street in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, is slashing the competition with their $45 full vehicle alignment. If you need tires or rims, visit Perez Tire Center right there at 72 Milton Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Also, Asus Bail Bond. Yasmin Khan, quick response, 24-7, easy payment, 203-257-6228. Call Yasmin Khan if you need Asus Bail Bond services. Also, Evolution Sports Bar Cafe. This Thursday, February 13th, is going to be Valentine's Day special. They're at Evolution's Bar, um, right there in Bridgeport, Connecticut, Semana de Amor. Thursdays, they have DJ Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. So Thursdays is karaoke and happy hour. Friday is ladies night. Ladies are free. Saturdays is fusion day. And then Sundays is Dia de Rumba. Also, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, located right there at 1234 East Main Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut, specializing in seafood and churrasco. You need some lunch, dinner, wine, takeout, catering. Delivery, whatever it is you need, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant right there at 1234 East Main Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut can serve you. Also, if you need glass on your vehicle, contact Bridgeport Auto Glass at 1227-1227 Barnum Avenue in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Contact Pedro at 203-916-7990. Bridgeport Auto Glass at gmail.com all right also i need to mention miranda and sons automotive if you need brakes electrical system diagnostic check head gasket ac service tune-ups front end struts full general auto repair contact miranda and sons automotive right there at 360 avon street in bridgeport connecticut at 203-290-4883 again I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you're watching live right now, I'm going to ask you to please click press right now that share button and share this live broadcast into your timeline. Let someone know that we are here broadcasting live from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and we have state representative Felipe Antonio here in the studio tonight. And he's going to be sitting on the hot seat when we come back momentarily. Again, I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Bar Café, el mejor ambiente de Brisbane, Connecticut. Presenta Jueves de Karaoke y Happy Hour. Estoy enamorado de una mala. Viernes de Ladies Night, donde las damas entran gratis la noche entera. ¡Qué chévere! Sábado de Fusion Day. Y los domingos son de rumba. Con especial toda la noche. 
programas todos los días mezclando en vivo los DJ más duros con los mejores especiales en bebida y aperitivos muévete al lugar donde se vive la noche Evolution Sport Bar Café 1279 North Avenue Bridgeport, Connecticut Reservas al 203-908-1588 Evolution Sport Bar Café el mejor ambiente What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez, and I am your host, and we're broadcasting, broadcasting here from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And tonight I'm excited because I have state representative, Antonio Felipe. I keep wanting to say Felipe Antonio, but it's Antonio Felipe. Yes, sir. From the 130th district of the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, he's here in the studio tonight. And um, I want to read a quick statement in regards to Antonio Felipe. Born in 1996, he is an American politician. He was elected to the Connecticut House of Represent Representatives in May of 2019. Antonio was raised in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, uh, attended Housatonic Community College, and at the age of 23, he ran in a special election to replace um, Ezekiel Santiago, who died in office. Rest in peace, Ezekiel. Uh, Felipe defeated Republican candidate Joshua Paro and three Democrat parties um, who also ran up against him, for example, like Hector Diaz, and Christina Ayala, also Kate Rivera. Tonight we are honored to have one of the youngest politicians from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut here in the Super Elite Entertainment Studio. And without further ado, I want to introduce to you Mr. Antonio Felipe. How you doing? Good, good. Glad to be here. Pleasure, man. Glad to be here. We, we, first, let's get it out the way. Yeah. We're supposed to be live right now, but we ran into some technical difficulties tonight, yeah. which is unfortunate. But... That's not going to stop us from doing what we have to do here tonight Absolutely because we're pre-recording the show and we will be airing it right now. If you're watching, it's being aired right now. So, Antonio Felipe, 130th District of the City of Bridgeport, Connecticut, State Rep. Yes. Tell us about yourself. Um, well, as you just said, I'm the State Rep from the 130th District in Bridgeport. I grew up here, uh, South End, West Side, uh, Lower Avenue and Grove Street near the church, as well as uh, Park Avenue in between Campus Package and University of Bridgeport. Um, and I am just having such a good time. I'm very honored to be able to serve uh, the community that I grew up in, the places that I, I got to see firsthand what the struggles were, what people are going through, and you know how we can affect that, how we can change things for education, create equity, how we can create equity for people who need gainful employment and good gainful employment. And we're not talking about you know small minimum wage jobs that lead nowhere, but building careers and doing job training and making sure that people have opportunities to raise the floor rather than raise the ceiling. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know what? I mean, I know that you're a politician and I, and I told you I'm not well versed in political terms. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not into politics, but, um, but I respect you, highly respect you, especially you being working in the capacity that you're working in at the age that you are. Matter of fact, you just turned 24. Yes. This yes. past Super Sunday. Bowl. What, Sunday, Sunday right? Yeah. So, big happy birthday. Thank you. You're Thank getting you. old. Uh, not too old. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so you're 24. Yeah. Which I find really exciting. And like I said, I respect you, highly respect you. For example, Chris Rosario. Yeah. Uh, State Senator Dennis Bradley. I mean, that whole caliper of, of individuals who are from our city, from the Bridgeport, Connecticut, I mean, fighting so hard on a day-to-day -day basis on our behalf. Um, so my first question is, where does that tenacity come from? Um, to be honest, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> um, for me, it's something that I never expected. I did not expect to be in this position um, because obviously it took Ezekiel passing away for me to get here. And he is somebody who I thought was going to hold the seat for a while. Um, somebody who I thought was going to, you know, really do some some great things alongside Chris Rosario uh, for years to come and the fact that that wasn't going to happen made me feel like I had to spring into action for somebody who I, I felt that Ezekiel was was really you know he was there for a while and he was already established and doing very well but he mm -hmm. was kicking it up another level that's right um, but during the time where he was uh, where he unfortunately passed away him and Chris were, were a tandem really working in sync and, you know, those are big shoes to fill. And I'm not trying to, to replace Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. He is, he is now etched in the books of history. He is going to be somebody who everybody in the state capitol knows held this seat uh, for
for 10 years and I'm very proud to to have succeeded him um, but I really just wanted to step up for for you know a person who I consider family in Chris uh, and really you know helping him the way that Ezekiel was able to help him yeah, yeah. and um, if I should say you're doing an outstanding job Thank I you. mean you, you you took the vacant seat um, you, you, you're creeping up to about a year now yeah um, yeah so you're creeping up to about a year so you've been active you've been working in that capacity mm -hmm. so you, you, you're bringing you, you already have the experience you already have the know-how in regards to your campaign kickoff because 2020 yeah I mean 2021 is around the corner so the uh, Antonio Felipe campaign kickoff is a, is effectively kicking off right now on the show yeah right yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know we are we're doing a citizens election campaign program so we do need a lot of Bridgeport folks to to come and donate uh, just, you know, five dollars a piece, whatever you can spare, um, because we need one hundred and fifty Bridgeport folks to qualify for the uh, Citizens Election Program grant. Um, but we're working hard to make sure that this year is about equity. Mm -hmm. Last year was about making sure that Ezekiel was succeeded well, uh, making sure that I continue with a lot of the things that he believed in, that we as a city believe in. Um, but this year, it's really about equity and stability and making sure that, as I said before, we are raising that floor for our people who are who are going through a tough time and making sure that everybody has an equal opportunity and an actual equal opportunity. Yeah. Where does your passion come from? But before you answer that question, what I mean is, and, and I know I keep mentioning your age, mm -hmm. and the reason why I keep mentioning your age is because I love the fact that you took office when you were 23. Mm -hmm. You already had experience because you helped... Chris Rosario, you helped uh, your dad, mm -hmm. who was also in office. I mean, you helped all these other politicians throughout your earlier years, molded you, shaped you, prepped you for that great opportunity to take the seat that, rest in peace, Ezekiel Santiago left behind, uh, you know, for you, yeah. to, for you to take. But, I mean, where, where does that, that passion really come from? I mean, like, one day that you wake up and say, I, I have what it takes to do what my dad has done. I have what it takes to do what Finch has done. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mayor Ganim has done this, you know, because you've been exposed to Chris Rosario for years as well. Yeah. You and him are really tight-knitted friends. Mm -hmm. um, that influence, that exposure. Um, it really comes from, honestly, you hear the stories all the time mm -hmm. about Bridgeport and what Bridgeport used to be. And Bridgeport's never gonna be that exact same thing again because those were different demographics. Those are different dynamics. I'm talking about the days where we were like the manufacturing hub and Remington Arms was was an integral part of what Bridgeport was. Um, but I see where we can go to do something like that again, mm -hmm. where we can be, you know, a very vibrant city, a place that people want to be, a place that people can raise their families and be comfortable, uh, a place where where people can, you know, can grow and, you know, we can grow along with them. I see Bridgeport being a great city once again. And. I think that that you know tenacity comes from just seeing that you know having that vision and wanting to act on that mm. and you know I I feel like people have put their trust in me by voting for me um, to help enact that vision people have put their trust in Christopher Rosario um, the rest of our, our house delegation Senator Bradley Senator Moore to really you know push forward so we want to do that how important is it for you as an individual representing the city of Bridgeport to be that voice there at the Capitol on our behalf. How important is that for you? Yeah. Um, well, I'll rephrase it because it's not important for me to be the voice. Mm -hmm. It's important for that voice to, to exist. But I think that my greatest role and the, the thing that really makes me proud to be a state representative is bringing the voices of the community with me. Mm. So. It's not about just, you know, me, because I can't have every single experience, you know. We're talking about this year, uh, clean slate legislation. And I've never been in the system. I have family who has, and I have people who I know in my district who have. Those people, and listening to their stories and their experiences, that's what really will give me the fuel to go in and testify on behalf of them, um, to really talk about it, or bring them to testify for themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, there are so many different issues that we have to think about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not going to have firsthand experience with all of them. None of us are. Whether you're 23, 23, 24 years old or 90 years old. 
you know, you have to take those various experiences and, you know, consolidate them. Yeah. Can you can you define for the people that are watching when you say yeah. clean slate, what are you referring to by? It's a uh, legislation where uh, people's records will be expunged mm. in three to five years uh, automatically mm -hmm. as long as they uh, fall under certain uh, qualifications. As yeah. long as they, they do certain things by the book the right way, um, it's automatic. It's not the same antiquated system that we have where they make you jump through three hoops and put them on fire um, and really have people struggling so, so mightily to get back in, into being a part of, a, of society. Um, I think that the current system right now, in certain ways, uh, they promote recidivism. And we don't want people going back to jail. We want people coming back and contributing and being a big part of the community as soon as they want to. So to take away some of those obstacles is uh, a really big challenge ahead of us. But it's something that I think we need to, to go in there and tackle because it's very important. That's right. And you know what? I truly, as you're sitting here talking, I appreciate um, the, the subject that you're touching on right now because that's something that I myself am passionate about uh, because I truly believe in uh, seeing ex-offenders you know, coming out of the system back into our community and utilizing the resources that are out there. Um, you know, job works, job, all, all the different uh, job readiness programs, you know, like s someone coming out of the system uh, uh, don't have experience, don't, don't have education. I mean, you have the workplace, for example, around the corner yeah. from here. I mean, all these services that are in our community are so vital and so important for the transition of these individuals coming back into our community. So, as you're mentioning that, when it comes to cutting, cutting, you know, costs or or the legislation, you guys up up there, um, cutting f finances that's coming into these these companies that these inmates, ex offenders are utilizing. I mean, how important is it for those services to remain as they are? Um, it's it's critically important, and I I'm glad you brought up funding um, because when we talk about uh, funding right now Th this is 2020 this is uh census 2020 mm -hmm. and i think it's very important that we talk about making sure people get counted um because when we are undercounted we are underfunded we are undercounted we have the chance to lose uh you know even a congressman in uh in the u.s in u.s congress but also you can lo use lose some of your state officials mm. um you know we could lose a state representative we could lose a state senator if we don't count, and I think it's critically important that we get everybody counted in the 2020 census so that we can keep the representation that we have and also keep or increase the funding that we have federally so that we can continue to, to fund these programs. Yeah, and you know, these programs are so vital and so important as you stated because truth be told, we do have some hardcore criminals that are incarcerated, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we have some, some legitimate, you know, stand up individuals that are in that situation who made a mistake yeah you know who happen to get caught up in in the wrong place the wrong time uh type of situation and they deserve another opportunity i i, I call it a second chance yeah you know they deserve another opportunity they have family they have children they it's kind of hard to come out into the community yeah after being incarcerated and, and applying for a job at mcdonald's or burger king and being turned away mm -hmm. so you know what, what you're referring to as a clean slate, being granted an opportunity to maybe, if you do the right thing for the first five years, getting a full unconditional pardon, pardon from the state of Connecticut is so important. Yeah. And I believe that that's what you're fighting for. And I know Chris Rosario has been fighting for yeah. that as well. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, it's something that is very easy to believe in um, because I believe that people can change. Mm -hmm. I, I know that some people don't see it that way. Some people think, you know, everybody's stuck in their ways. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes you make a mistake, as you said, and you learn from it. Yeah. And if you learn and you've already paid your dues because you served that sentence, it's over. Mm -hmm. You come out. We shouldn't be uh, making it so much harder for you to come back into our, into our everyday society. Mm -hmm. Because if we do that, then we're just saying, you know what? We'd rather have you in there. Because we're not giving you any opportunity out here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that we need to, to make sure that 
those folks that really do want to do do good by themselves and really want to contribute are given that opportunity because we need everybody we can to contribute to this economy, mm -hmm. to contribute to the to the job market, and just to make Connecticut move forward. We need as many people as we can. The best and brightest people might still be uh, you know incarcerated. Yeah. You know, say somebody goes to jail at seventeen. Yep. You know that that kid still has his life ahead of him. Mm -hmm. So who are we to take you know more years of that life away? That's right. So you represent the 130th district yes. of the city of Bridgeport. So what area is that? That is downtown, the south end, uh, the west side up until North Avenue, and the lower east side. Okay. So State Rep. Antonio Felipe. Yeah. What is your main agenda walking into 2020? Walking into 2020, um, my main agenda is really, as I, as I stated earlier, mm -hmm. equity and stability. And that's not my agenda for 2020. That's my agenda going forward. Mm. Um, that's in terms of education and ECS funding, making sure that Bridgeport gets their fair share. That's in terms of, of housing. I know that something that I'm interested in, not, not anything that I have put legislation forward on yet, um, but something that I've talked about is um, converting blighted land into small housing where people can have a rent to own program. So let's say um, you wanted to own a home. You're sing and, and let's say you're, you're a single man and you don't want anything extravagant, right? You don't need, you know, four bedrooms. And it could be a small house, you know, yeah. like a, almost like a studio apartment mm -hmm. with a bedroom, you know, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room, small little house, right? Let's say we built that on blighted land that was owned by the city of Bridgeport. Now, the city is able to make something back on that land, um, you know, by having the property utilized. And the rent-to-own program would be, you know, six months. You rent it at a certain at a certain rate that would probably be um, comparable to what a mortgage would be. And then you are able to, after you prove that you paid it for six months, you prove that you can continue to make those payments. Mm -hmm. You can own <coughs> a piece of property that's not quite as expensive as a regular home. Yeah. So when we talk about the city of Bridgeport that you represented, um, what condition do you believe the city is in right now? Do you think that we're in a good place right now? Um, or can we be better? We can always be better. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's that's kind of the reason that you, you get up in the morning and you go to go to the, the capital. Mm -hmm. The reason you do that is because you know the city can be better. Uh, I think that we can always do, you know, you can always be 10 steps ahead of where we are. Mm -hmm. So I will never say that my city is in a bad place. Yeah. Um, there are certain things that we need to improve on, and there are certain things that we can improve on. Um, but everything can get better, and, and I'm just there to help ensure that things continue to, to get better. Excellent. With that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And uh, when we come back, we'll pick up where we left off at, okay? All right. All right. So you guys that are watching right now live on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to us on, on, on Periscope, on our podcast, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, or Anchor, I want to welcome you into the show tonight. I have State Rep Antonio Felipe here in the studio with me um, on the hot seat. We're broadcasting here out of the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. When we come back, we will continue on with our subject. We'll be back momentarily. Don't go anywhere, guys. Looking for custom wheels? Looking for quality and professional service? Do you need a flat tire repaired? Are you looking for a $45 alignment and the lowest prices in the state? Come to Perez Tire Center located in the city of Bridgeport. At Perez Tire Center, we take pride in our selection and service. We are never short on inventory and we give you the best guaranteed lowest prices up front. At Perez Tire Center, we slash the competition and will beat the other guys. Financing is available and no credit check is needed. We also install batteries and tires on recreational vehicles, trailers, and motorcycles. If you need it, we got it. Perez Tire Center is open seven days per week, located at 72 Knowlton Street in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Hi, my name is Antonio Felipe. I'm the new state representative from the 130th district, a district that was represented by Ezekiel Santiago. And now we are proud that the House has passed uh, House Bill 6996, an act uh, extending foreclosure mediation program. 
Representative Felipe, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I also rise in strong support of this legislation. Uh, I think it's pretty apparent to everybody. I'm probably the person who's most recently gone through the public school system. And as a young Latino in Bridgeport, Connecticut, uh, it was very apparent to me that the teachers that were teaching me and the people that were dealing with me in the school system uh, didn't understand what I went through before 8 o'clock and after 3 o'clock, what I went home to, uh, what I woke up to, the streets I had to walk to get to the bus uh, to get there. And I think this is addresses that problem, this legislation. It, it makes it a little bit easier for people to understand uh, what happens outside of books when you're teaching a child. Uh, and for me, that's something that I can get behind strongly in support, and I hope that the rest of my colleagues can do that as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I actually talked about, um, that's funny. All right, you guys, and welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez. As you know, I'm already here in the studio in Bridgeport, Connecticut with State Representative Antonio Felipe. Yeah. And um, yeah, as we were coming back from the commercial break, we were just showing that clip of you speaking there at the house. And... Um, it was condensed because I condensed it. Okay. Okay. I saw it condensed because I know that uh, when I spoke on the floor that time, uh -huh. um, one of the, the bigger things that I, that I was kind of touching on was, you know, what happens before 8 o'clock and after 3 o'clock. Um, and, you know, a few times I actually got robbed on the way to school. Really? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything, like, uh, too crazy. Like, you know, it wasn't, like, robbed at gunpoint. But, you know, uh -huh. people were, you know, like, Grown, grown men. I'm a, I'm a sophomore going to walk to, to the bus stop. Actually, the bus stop from Park Avenue near Campus Package, uh -huh. uh, all the way to John Street. So I was walking all the way up Park Avenue, under the, under the underpass, <coughs> to John Street, and on the corner where, where they have the uh, housing that used to be the YMCA. Mm -hmm. um, a, a couple times, uh, I was stopped by grown men. You know, probably their 30s, 40s. And they told me to give them everything out of my pocket. And, wow. Yeah. And you did? For the most part. I tried to <laughs> I tried to keep a few things, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> like my wallet. Um, but they got everything that was in it. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. So looking at the video clip that we were just playing, mm -hmm. um, you standing there in that big oval place, yeah. which is called a? The chamber. The chamber. Yeah. A lot of people there. Yeah. I mean, if it was me standing there with that microphone in my hand, I don't even know. But I, I, it would probably be so difficult for me to get a word out. I mean, but you did it fluently. No problem. I mean. Almost, almost no problem. <laughs> I will say that I have definitely done uh, less of the uh. uh -huh. So in that in that clip, you see me go uh a uh -huh. lot. And that was kind of my pause. And now I actually just pause. Okay. It's a little bit easier. You stop for a second. You gather yourself. You get your thoughts together. And then you go. Um, but that was probably the second or third time I spoke on the floor. Wow. Um, and it was very, you know, daunting. You know, I was fiddling around. I was kind of looking down and if, in, the, in the video. And I'm much more confident speaking now um, just because I have a lot more confidence that I have something to say. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was always, always nerve-wracking, and it still is. I just think I learned how to roll through the punches a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I can't even, I can't even imagine, uh, yeah. you, you know, you stand in there and <sighs> how many people are in that room? Well, there are 151 of us. Um, so I'm one of 151. Wow. And, uh, there are also, there are people in the gallery. So when you saw me, I'm sitting in the back, which actually fun fact, my chair that I, that I sit in next to Representative Doucette and Mary Mashinsky was occupied by Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewicz when she was in the house. Mm. And I think, don't quote me on this, uh, Denise Merrill, who is the Secretary of State. Yep. Um, so when I'm sitting there and I look forward, what I'm looking at is the speaker and all the clerks. And above him, there's a balcony, and that balcony is called the gallery. Yep. And there are, you know, sometimes there are five, six people there when we're talking about something that's, you know, a little more in the weeds, and then, you know, it's just important to a few folks. But when we're talking about something big, that, that place is packed, too. So, you know, you have, like, 200. You have media there as well? Uh, at times. At That's times. I, they're very, I think they're strategic as to when they let media come in. And, but we have CTN. So everything we do is televised. Yeah. 
So when I when you're sitting there, I sit in in the middle basically. On either side, there's the CTN camera. Wow. And when people are speaking on the on the floor, um, like let's say Representative Doucette is speaking, I have to be very cautious about like what I'm doing because he's on TV right now ah. and I'm right next to him. Not that I would do anything, you know, <laughs> anything crazy. Yeah. But you know. You scratch your nose, and uh-huh. it's like you're picking your nose. You're on CTN, and it's like... <laughs> yeah, before you know it, that picture end up all over the place. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> They're like, oh, he was picking his nose. Yeah. I'm like, oh, great. That's that's <laughs> that's amazing, man. Yeah. So, back to the city mm-hmm. of Bridgeport. We were talking about the condition, where we're at as a city. Um, <clears throat> I always like to mention, when I have all you different politicians here, I always like to bring up that beautiful landscape that we have right there, the waterfront, yeah. where Boca Restaurant is. Okay. Um, there have been talks of us getting a, a casino for quite some time. So my question is, are we eventually, at some point, maybe going to see a casino here in the city of Bridgeport? And is that something that you support? We are continuing to fight for it. I, I definitely support it. It's something that Ezekiel supported before me. It's something that, that Chris has been working on for almost the entirety of his, of his uh, you know, time in the general assembly and i think that we just owe it to the city to give them as many opportunities for development as we possibly can mm-hmm. um whether it's the casino or something else i know that the the clock is ticking on it mm-hmm. um but we're going to continue to fight for it as long as it's viable mm-hmm. okay so when you in the beginning of the year when you were running for the vacant seat mm-hmm. i remember that there was some criticism criticism and some controversy in regards to you not living in Bridgeport. You uh-huh. lived in Stratford and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sure that's not a concern today. No. Right. You're a Bridgeport resident. Yeah. We want to we let the people know. Yeah. You're a Bridgeport resident. So just in case they try to bring up that same yeah. critique from, you know, last year. Well, people were saying that, that you know, on election day, I wasn't I wasn't a Bridgeport resident. Uh-huh. I, I moved in, you know, as soon as I got this opportunity. Um, to me... It was it was a homecoming. Like everybody likes to talk about the the year in Stratford, uh-huh. but they don't talk about you know the twenty plus years in Bridgeport, and you know growing up and like I scraped my knee on Laurel Avenue, I scraped my knee on Park Avenue, I didn't scrape my knee on Bear Park Road in Stratford. You were robbed on Park Avenue. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, so you know that 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 experience is lived experience here going through things you know growing up here mm-hmm. um and yeah i'm always going to be here from now on yeah i think that i spent a year trying to collect some rent money and my plan was expedited a little bit by the situation at hand but i came back because i love the city and i want to get back to it now your dad reuben yeah worked under bill finch's administration yes um you got some great influence there bill finch was great mm-hmm. um how influential has your father been in your life up to the point where you are right now? Well, I will say that the biggest thing for me is knowing that my father, to me, is a real-life superhero. Uh, my father, I said, will me. Um, and he could have easily said, I'm going to go live off disability, not have any kids, not have any responsibilities. And instead, you know, he works tirelessly to make a living for his family. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did that when I was living with him. He does that now for his kids that are still with him. My sister Olivia is eight years old. Wow. Um, my brother Diego is 17. And, you know, he just keeps going and he doesn't stop. And that came from him and his mother before him. His mother, you know, single mom, you know, Latina living in New York. And uh, when he was younger, he had a surgery. He had a surgery, he went to a hospital. I, I think it was in Massachusetts. Don't quote me on that. But it was, you know, long ways away. Yeah. And she worked six days a week. And then she went on that, that one day and she went to visit him on the train. I think it was three hours, three hours there, three hours back. And, you know, she just wouldn't stop and wouldn't give up. And he kind of embodies that. He personifies that. And now, for me... It's just growing up to be somebody that those two can be proud of. And, you know, it's, it's an immense amount of pressure when wow. you think about it. Because to me, they're really like superheroes. Mm. 
Mm. I mean, I'm sure that when your parents look at you, they're, they're very proud of the type of individual you have turned out to be. Um, because individuals your age, you know, are caught up out there doing yeah. what they shouldn't be doing. But, you know, I admire you as a person. Forget about you as a state rep, but you as a as a, as an individual that's 24 years old, working in the capacity you work in, I take my hat off to you, and I respect you fully and highly and completely. You know, so I congratulate you. you on on the great decisions you have made to position yourself where you are today. I mean, that's that's amazing on Thank your you. behalf. Thank you. I think um, it's very important to me that uh, people understand this is not you know, a, a glory run for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here because I want to be the state rep or because I want to be this shining light. What I want to be is somebody who occupies this seat and does it well mm. because the seat has been here before me. It's going to be here after me. Um, but the work that I do while I'm in it is critically important to the city of Bridgeport. And, you know, I want to leave a good legacy because I want to be able to say at the end of the day that I did all I could Mm -hmm. in this seat when I had it. Yeah. So, and I have to ask, age mm -hmm. factor. Has your age ever been a concern for you throughout the year that you have been active in your role? Um, a concern? Mm -hmm. No. I think that in terms of, of the way that some other people look at me, maybe. Mm -hmm. But that's not something that I, that I, you know, really take into account. Mm -hmm. I think that I just need to represent well as a person. I think that my perspective is refreshing and it gives some, pe some people uh, a different way to look at things because I'm 24 now. Nobody who is in that General Assembly has been 24 in 2020. So um, I think it's a, a great asset of mine. And the drawbacks that people think it may have, um, I implore them to just look at me for who I am and how I act and, and you know what I try to do because, you know, I, I don't want to be cliche and say age is nothing but a number. Yeah. But um, my age is just a small part of who I am. Yeah. You ran and managed, uh, what well, I'm not saying ran, you managed State Representative Chris Rosario's campaign at some point, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what was that experience like? Um, the experience is great. I think it always depends on who the candidate is. I, um, I've i worked on, in a, in a high level, on many different campaigns. But... Chris's campaign is one where we're all like family. Mm -hmm. We're all very, very close knit. Um, we all know what the vision is. We know who Chris is, and we try to make sure that that Chris is uh, represented that way. I think now in my campaigns, I try to do the same thing: make mm -hmm. sure that who I am is represented, not just you know what position I hold, uh, and not just what I do as a state rep, but like you know, there's a person under there. Yeah, and you need to know who that is. Yeah. So, as a public figure which you are your state rep um how do you keep your your integrity intact on a day-to-day -day basis because you know when you're in the public's eye they are always watching you yeah. to make that one mistake so they can tear you apart yeah how do you keep that in check and in line um i just try to be who i've always been I think uh, it's something that that we've talked about earlier and that something that chris rosario does mm -hmm. where I don't try to fake the funk or be anybody different. I don't put on a show. Like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and when somebody asks me a question, I answer it. And I also don't pretend like I know more than I do. Mm -hmm. I know what I don't know. I understand that there are some answers I don't have. But I do believe that I am the best person to go out and get those answers. Yeah. And bring them to the people when they need them. That's awesome. With that said, another commercial break. When we come back, we'll pick up where we left off, all right? All right. All right. So you guys that are watching right now, I want to thank you uh, for tuning in. We're broadcasting here from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will continue on with State Representative Antonio Felipe, who's here in the studio sitting on the hot seat. We'll be back momentarily, guys. Don't go anywhere. Hi. Welcome to ACES Bail Bonds. <laughs> Do you need information regarding bail bonds and the bail bond process? Contact us at ACES Bail Bonds where we are happy to give you a free bail consultation. You are in capable hands with our reputable agency.
offer fast, reliable bail bond service? Get out of jail fast with ACES Bail Bonds. You can save time and money by calling ahead. We'll have the forms ready for you with everything handled privately, discreetly, and confidentially at our office. For fast, reliable bail bond service, call ACES Bail Bonds now. Welcome to Ramirez Restaurant. All right, you guys, welcome back to Life with Jason Rodriguez. I'm here in the studio in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut with my good friend, Antonio Felipe. What's going on? All right. So, Antonio, how are you feeling so far? Good. Um, it's just, this has been a very enjoyable experience. Um, I've actually never done a show like this where there's video and audio and uh, this uh, was going to be live. So, yeah, I've never been through that experience before. I've been on podcasts and obviously, you know, things like News 12 and and others but uh this has been a really good experience and i'm glad to be here that's awesome and i'm i'm really really glad to have you here and as you stated this was supposed to be live we ran into some technical difficulties which um you know is being troubleshoot but uh, uh you know if you're watching this was pre-recorded we're not live right now but hey listen we ran into a situation yeah. but we didn't allow it to hold us back no. as you do you know you fight you fight your way through it you fight for us there in the state capitol and you know that's what we're doing right now yeah. even though we had a little setback minor setback the comeback is just as good yeah no <laughs> I, it, it's been great yeah and it's funny you said fight um because on the way up here i was just thinking about and i, I had no idea about your background with the boxing uh-huh um but just like i know that chris uh, touched on it a little bit when, in his interview and um it's definitely been a big part of my life um Maybe not boxing itself, but being a fan. Yeah. And uh, watching that with my father, my uncles, and, and my brother, who's a huge fan of, uh, of professional boxing. Yeah. So, he likes boxing. Yeah. Uh, definitely. You know, what's, your, what's, what's the, the division you like the, the most? Heavyweights? Um, lightweight? Superflies? So, so it, it was always welterweight uh -huh. while I was growing up, because obviously we're, we're in the era of Pacquiao. That's Mayweather, right. I'm Puerto Rican, so you know, got Coto. Coto. Um, <laughs> but then middleweight started really, really, you know, uh, as I got older, middleweight started really picking it up. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you have Canelo, Cotto moved up to middleweight, uh huh. Uh, Sergio Martinez for a while until he he ended up, you know, getting a little shaky towards the end. But there were a lot of uh, a lot of big names, and then you know, people from other divisions where they just made their fights exciting, like Adonis Stevenson for that little run that he had, uh huh. Superman. Yeah. Pretty interesting. You know all the big names in the sport. Yeah. Um, Some of the smaller ones I might have an issue with. Yeah. No. So, no. I mean, no. Yeah. I mean, for you to mention all the big names, that means you've been watching all the yeah, big yeah. fights. Yeah. <laughs> Fighter mm -hmm. mentality. I mean, is that something that you have to have working your capacity? I think so. I think you have to go in there expecting that you're going to get hit with some blows. Mm -hmm. um, there are going to be things that happen you don't like. They're gonna be people that come at you and and talk to you like like they know who you are uh -huh. and try to pick you apart and you know um, they they're gonna they're gonna train themselves to to go after you so you gotta train yourself to be to be ready for that that's right and then you know your training is your counter yeah you know how you respond and based on what I've been you know I've read about you I've been you know monitoring you since you took the vacant seat. Um, just like Chris Rosario, when when people come against him, you're similar to Chris. I love the way Chris responds. He responds respectfully, with dignity, with class, and such professionalism that you know it makes a person step back and say, "Okay, wow," you know. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the type of caliper of person that you are, which is appreciative. Uh, to stick with with the uh, boxing references, you gotta have a tough chin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when they're when they're throwing some shots at you. You can't look at it as, you know, a personal thing or, you know, 
get too too in the weeds about it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people have misconceptions that they that they run with, and you have to either give them an opportunity to understand who you are, or where you come from, or you know just brush it off and understand that you know there are more important things at hand. Yeah. Your final words to the people that are watching right now. Uh, if there was something that you were going to say to somebody, yeah. what would that be? Well, my final word would be, um, I, uh, first of all, thank you for watching. Second of all, uh, we are coming up on 2020 legislative session. This is a big year. Even though it's not a, not a budget year, we're going to be in a sprint right now. We're going to be doing things like clean slate. Uh, we are going to be fighting for a lot of our different uh, values. And you guys need to come up and if you really are passionate about an issue, if you're passionate about Clean Slate, if you're passionate about education funding, if you're passionate about uh, some of the various issues that we're going to be bringing up, uh, legalizing marijuana by chance, you should come up and you should testify. You should talk about what you believe in, because the more voices that you get up at that Capitol talking about a certain issue, the better it is for us uh, to understand what the people want, what you're looking for, um, how you want that to go. So if you come up and you show up in, you know, in droves, you, you know, bring a van. If you have an organization and that organization is really passionate about a certain issue, drive a van up there. Everybody go testify because it's critically important that your voice is heard because everybody's voice is important. And once we get that together, you know, this is my first committee process. This is something that I'm very excited about, uh, you know, really hearing from the people and, and gaining a perspective. You're sitting there and learning, you know. Because I, I think that people don't don't think about it that way. But we are sitting up there and we're learning every single day when, when people are talking to us about the various issues. There are certain things that we would never think of that somebody brings up and it's like, okay. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to take everything that everybody says into consideration and try to put together the best bills. And, you know, make sure that the best uh, laws are passed once everything goes through. And you stated it. You know, we have a voice. Mm-hmm. In order for us to speak up, we must show up. And with that said, as you're speaking, I'm, lis- I'm, I'm listening to you. And what comes to my mind is how important is it for the people to get out there and to voice their opinion with their vote? I mean, vo- voting is important. How important is it do you believe it is? I think voting is one of the most important things. I think when you talk about, um, you know, the fact that I'm here is because people voted for me. Mm-hmm. You know, if nobody votes, uh, you don't really know how the people feel. I mean, you know, sometimes you'll have a situation where somebody will get elected and it doesn't actually reflect the people around them because not enough people came out to vote. If you really feel passionate about something, if you feel passionate about some of the issues that, that I talk about on the campaign trail, if you feel passionate about somebody's issues, you know, on the presidential trail right now, it's important that you get out and you vote for those people who represent the issues that are are most effective and matter most to you. Um, it's critically important to get out there and vote, to exercise your right. I am a young Latino, uh, a young minority, and right now there are so many of us in the city of Bridgeport. And we need to exercise our right because we don't come out as strongly as others do. And when we come out, and we really voice our opinion, that's when we can affect change in a holistic way and really get things done for the city of Bridgeport that reflect what the city of Bridgeport actually looks like. With that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, I'm going to hit you off with what I call the shotgun questions for the finale. All right. All right. You guys don't go anywhere. Me and Felipe will be right back momentarily.
Mm-hmm. Welcome back to Super Elite Entertainment. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. And let me bring back state rep, Antonio Felipe. What's going on? You ready for the uh, shotgun questions? Absolutely. You sure? Yes. All right. Simple questions that sometimes are a little complicated for people to answer. Okay. But let's go. Here we go. Your favorite song? My favorite song. So there are a few answers to this. Uh-huh. Uh huh. One of my favorite songs is uh, Miss Fat Booty by Most Def. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of my songs that I was talking about yesterday, actually, is uh, A Day in the Life by The Beatles. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the switch between uh, Lennon and McCartney. Yep. The, you know, the, uh, the different amalgamations of how they made the song. It was, mm-hmm. It's just very interesting. And they're both, it's like two good songs in one. Cool. Actually, my son loves the Beatles. Okay. He's uh, 17. Hmm. Hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Uh, Pulp Fiction. Easy. Why Pulp Fiction? Uh, the way it was directed and shot. Um, out of order. It, it's kind of one of the first uh, movies that I was able to see when I was younger and understand. I guess it just caught me at a moment in time. Gotcha. Where I was able to uh, follow it. Yeah. For the first time. First time I watched it, I was lost. Just to let you know. (laughs) (laughs) I was lost. Um, Took me a few times to watch the movie, though. Yeah. I I could sit through that, but I couldn't sit through The Godfather. It was too long. Godfather is too long. I I love The Godfather now. I will watch it whenever it comes on. Not on cable TV. Uh But You want uh, the uncut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncensored. <laughs> yeah. I don't want the, the three hours of commercials plus the three hours of movie. Either. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Favorite food? Favorite food. Uh, my grandmother's steak, tostones, and uh, white rice and beans. Nice. Yeah. That's uh, that's a good selection. Your grandmother's local, so uh, we can yes. go and eat together? <laughs> yes. yes. She, uh, she's invited a few people. Uh, from our our little sphere here in Bridgeport, yeah, to have Sunday dinner with us. Nice, uh, yeah. Our city clerk Lydia Martinez has a standing invitation. Oh, okay, yeah. um, your favorite sport, and I know that you used yeah. to be a baseball player, right? Yes, it is absolutely my favorite sport. Um, it's just one of those things where I, I loved watching it from the beginning, uh-huh. but then I played, and when you play a sport, especially when you play a sport, and you know, you you play it at a on a serious level, you you can have a different perspective when people are going through things. Like, mm. uh, I'll see somebody make a make a play, and it'll be simple to some. And to me, I'm just like, oh, I, I know what went into that, and it makes me appreciate the game more. Wow, wow. And, I mean, you're a young guy. Do yeah. you still play? Uh, not as much as I, as I would like to. Um, sadly, when I got older, you know, 18, 19, those summer ball seasons – would fall during campaign season uh, and that's how I, that's how I would make my money so uh <laughs> you know didn't really work out that way yeah uh i could still swing it a little bit oh yeah I'm still swing it a little bit but you prefer baseball or softball i prefer baseball but mm-hmm. i i do understand the reality that i'm probably gonna have to play more softball as i get older <laughs> absolutely <laughs> uh what's your favorite car hmm it's uh So, I will talk about a specific car. My uh, cousin Eduardo likes to work on work on cars, and he had an Eagle Talon from the '90s that he wow. restored. Um, and I just always like I always liked that car. I always thought it was uh, I always thought it was it was cool to to see him work on it, uh-huh. and also in minor ways like handing him a wrench or whatever. I got to like help him with it, so it was it was cool. Oh, uh, so you're a bit mechanical. Yeah. No, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Uh, I just admired that he was so passionate about the work and yeah, uh, being able to spend time with him and help him do that. It's cool. What's the favorite thing you like to read? Mm. Um, you mean favorite book? Yeah, favorite book or, or reading material. Favorite thing you like to read? Um, I'm a fan of poetry. I, I will say, um, creative writing. You know, sometimes it's it's uh, good to talk about the things that you're feeling Mm -hmm. or have a sense of escapism Mm -hmm. by uh, having some creative writing pieces on you Um, and then also just reading about uh, different histories you know uh, right now I'm I'm reading about Hispanic history in America Um, Mm. so yeah nice what's your favorite word 
Favorite word. Hmm. You know, uh, Danny Pizarro, who owns. Oh, uh, yeah, Danny P. Of, Big shout of, out to Danny yeah, P. Danny P. owns a lot of uh, <laughs> property in Bridgeport. Yeah, he does. And it's been stuck in my head lately because uh, he does Instagram videos and he's always on Instagram Live and he says, exactly. So, exactly is the, the word that's on my mind right now. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, Danny P. <laughs> <laughs> um, what sound or noise do you like to hear the most? Hmm. You know, the sound of fresh rain. Sound of fresh rain. Um, not crazy heavy drops, but like a steady a steady rainfall is, is kind of soothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you was able to do it all over again, career-wise, yeah. what would it be? Um, I would probably write professionally. I think um, some sort of creative writing. I, I like, uh, you know, turning a phrase. Mm -hmm. It's something that... that I, I do in my spare time mm -hmm. um, and it's just something that if I could make a career out of it um, it'd be very interesting to see how far I could take that okay final question yeah. if heaven really exists mm -hmm. when you arrive at the pearly gates what do you want to hear God say to you state representative Felipe Antonio when you arrive there uh, we got food <laughs> We got food. We got food? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, specifically, uh, they have replicated all of my grandmother's cooking, and I could have that for eternity. That'd be all. That'd be all I want. Wow. That'd be all I want. Yeah, we have a Sunday dinner every Sunday, and uh, having, haven't gotten tired of it yet. Yeah. I don't, I don't expect to get tired of it in the next 24 years or past that. <laughs> so with that said, man. We're at the completion of the show. Um, it's been an exciting time. I'm truly, truly grateful that you were willing to come down here. Yeah, of course. Um, we ran into some technical difficulties. We were, you know, sitting yeah. here troubleshooting. We were supposed to be live. Unfortunately, it's pre-recorded, but I personally feel that it still worked out. Yeah. Um, we still made it happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, you get a flat tire. It's, it's on. You, know, you get a flat tire. You call Perez. Yeah, Perez Tire, Perez Tire Center. Center. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, uh, we rolled through it, and you know, it's on the internet. The internet lives forever, so yeah. You know, I'm glad that we got to do it, and uh, we got to sit down and, and have this chat. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a great platform. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, thank you. And um, as I stated, you know, we had some technical difficulties. We were supposed to be live tonight, and um, you know, I truly apologize to all our our followers and our fans who tune in on a weekly basis. Um, but you know, it's still here. Broadcasting is going to be on YouTube, it's on Facebook, it's on LimeWire, it's on Periscope, it's on Spotify, uh, Anchor Podcast, it's on our website, and also on Apple Podcast. So it's it's all over the place, man. It's all over the place. The message is being communicated, which is the most important thing tonight. And in about 10 years' time, they'll be able to directly link it to your brain. So, you know. <laughs> I know I gave you an opportunity to state your final words, yeah. but I'm going to give you your one last chance. Final words for the people that are watching. Uh, you know, I just think that everybody should uh, be good to each other. I think that when I talk about Bridgeport, I talk about how I see a vision for a better city, but that comes through loving each other. That comes through treating each other with respect. That comes through understanding that we might all have a different vision for how this is going to unfold, but there are great things ahead and we need to be ready for them. And I hope that you guys all, you know, we put our collective minds together and we get it done. Perfect. And with that said, you did, you destroyed it. You killed it okay. tonight. <laughs> such an honor, such a privilege. Of course. Continue on doing what you're doing, representing our city, the yes. city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, the 130th district. Um, continue fighting. You know, you, Dennis Bradley, Chris Rosario, all of you guys, man, who are always up there in Hartford yeah. and fighting on tomorrow. our behalf. And you'll be up there tomorrow. Tomorrow in session. Yeah, tomorrow session at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. First day. First day. Congratulations, brother, Thank on you. your accomplishment. Thank you so much. 2020, 2021, you're going to work hard now, yep. as you already have been. Absolutely. 2021, the dream just continues on. Yeah. <laughs> we got to fight to make sure it stays that way. That's right. Keep it intact. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you who tuned in tonight. Thank you. Stay rep. Um, Antonio Felipe for coming down to the show. I want to thank all of you that are watching right now. Thank you for tuning in. We're sorry for the te technical difficulties that we ran into tonight. 
But again, we'll be back next week, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Actually, our guest next week on Tuesday is going to be the owner, I believe, of Liberty Tax and Moran Agency, Nate Moran. Okay. Yeah, Nate Moran will be here in the studio sitting on the hot seat. You know Nate has that really strong Dominican accent. Yes, sir. So uh, we're going to have fun with that. But, again, I'm your host. power. <laughs> <laughs> again, I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. So excited uh, to be here tonight. Thank you, State Representative Antonio Felipe. I keep wanting to say Chris Rosario, but State Representative Antonio Felipe. Uh, thank you for coming down to the studio. You know, you're such a great individual um you're a great role model to the citizens of our city continue doing what you're doing pressing forward pressing on and fighting for us on our behalf again thank you so much for tuning in tune in next week at 7 p.m we'll be here broadcasting live from the great city of bridgeport connecticut god bless and have a good night guys